So what's up again, Jet Nation? My name is Green Bean, and I'm coming to you from Charlottesville, Virginia. I am back in Virginia for the foreseeable future, maybe November, maybe December. We're playing some youth football this year. I could not be more excited. My little son, Team Bean, is putting on the helmet and pads for the first time in his life, coming out of the flag realm, and he is making his tackles. Had a really good game from the cornerback position. Uh, I couldn't be more proud. So we're here in Charlottesville to get that done. But there's a lot going on in Jetsville. It gives me the opportunity to kind of sit down and dig in, which I don't really get on the road. I'm traveling, I'm driving, I'm this, I'm that, I'm roller coastering. So a lot of times it, it's more more it's more difficult to sit down and bug out on the jet stuff, but I've been able to do just that. And there is a lot of meat on our bone. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the roster cuts, a specific portion of the roster cuts and what we've done with the defensive backs. Think about this. Now, just to get started, this is the youngest defense that we've put on the field since 1990. That is 31 years years ago every team since 1990 has been older than the team we have now so when you hear guys like joe douglas and even robert sala talking about building in the draft bringing in young guys development we haven't seen that here for the new york jets in a long time guys we really haven't we have we've had almost no development think about this the last two years we didn't even have a quarterback coach we drafted a quarterback in the fourth round we had a third overall pick quarterback uh, on the roster, and we did not even have a quarterback coach or really even an offensive coordinator. Our head coach didn't even know who was on the defense. Wacky, wacky stuff and zero development going on. This staff has been giving us all these little blurbs about development and bringing guys up and supporting the young guys and all that sort of stuff. And we've heard that before, but we've never really seen it in recent memory. They just put their money where their mouth is. And this is going to be our starting unit. We have Bryce Hall, who has a whopping one year in the NFL, really a half year in the NFL. So he's going into his second season. Remember, the first half of last year, he was actually injured, coming off the ankle injury that he got at UVA. We have a combination of Brandon Eccles, Jason Pinnock, and... And Isaiah Dunn, two late round picks and an undrafted free agent. That's what we got going on over there. We just cut the guy with the most experience as far as who's going to play cornerback in Bless on Austin. It's interesting. A lot of us thought specifically because he had the most experience that he was going to stick on the team that the starting cornerbacks might be Bryce Hall and Bless on Austin. This staff said no. We're going to draft guys, and we're going to actually play them. What a novel idea. What a crazy thought. Let's draft some guys and use them. Let's take guys in the draft and put them on the football field. So we have two, three rookies, two late-round picks, and an undrafted free agent vying for the outside cornerback position outside of Bryce Hall. And then we have a slot corner position but really being fought for by Javelin Guidry, who was an undrafted free agent last year, who I still don't love, by the way. He had a good camp. I give him that. But I, I don't know, man. This guy does not impress me. I'm rooting for him. I really am, man. And I love his name. You guys know that. I've said it a thousand times. But I don't. He makes me nervous. Let me just say. So it's between Javelin Guidry and Michael Carter II. Michael Carter II was another late round pick in this year's 2021 draft. So we have an undrafted free agent with a whopping second year of experience and a rookie. So we have four rookies on our D in our defensive back unit. Now you could fold in uh, Mr. Hardy the, that we got from the Saints. Uh, he's a cornerback. He really was... He was really brought on to play special teams. He's a special teams ace, arguably one of the best special teams guys in the NFL. So that's why he's here. He can play cornerback. That's his natural position, but that's not really what he's on the roster for. So he would be more of an emergency guy. So guys, we're looking at really playing rookies and second year players. Now our safeties are a little bit better, right? We have Marcus May, LaMarcus Joyner, Ashton Davis, if he could get his his health together. I mean, he's back on IR now, so he's gone for at least a few weeks. 
Uh, it's you know it's it's tough with this 2020 draft class with guys like Jabari Zuniga, with guys like Cam Clark, Ashton Davis. These guys just cannot seem to get and stay on the field. Obviously, Cam Clark has never played a snap in the NFL. Uh, was having a decent camp, had that neck injury and all that. Jabari Zuniga got on the field for a smattering of plays last year, wasn't able to accomplish anything, and got re-injured this year. And obviously, we know about Ashton Davis. He was injured early in training camp, and he's now on IR, so he can be brought back. I think it's after three weeks uh, minimum, but so that means he's gone until at least week four. So while we still have Marcus May, LaMarcus Joyner, we brought in somebody named Brand or Redwine, Brandon Redwine, something like that from the from the. <laughs> I'm the Browns. I'll be I'll be honest. I don't know much about this guy. I did look him up. He's got a couple years of experience, has a pick or two, has some passes defense. So uh, seemingly we liked him It's because we brought him in off waivers. And we also have Sherrod Neesman, who beat out JT Hassel for the roster, which for the roster spot, which is surprising to me. I thought JT Hassel had it. So think about that, man. This coaching staff is actually dependent on rookies, second year players, and a handful of them are even undrafted free agents. Isaiah Dunn, Javelin Guidry. And then when we move up to the front seven, we got Bryce Huff, who's an undrafted free agent last year. And then CJ Mosley, if he can stay healthy, is flanked by two late round picks. Rookies in Hamsa Nasraldine, Jamie and Sherwood, man, that Jared Davis injury was big as far as the linebackers are concerned. But man, this is a young, young unit. But here's the positive in my, in my opinion. We're looking at having a, a, you know, a year where we evaluate guys. Like more than likely, we're not going to the Super Bowl this year. Can it happen? Sure, sure, it can happen. Anything can happen. Who knows what kind of lightning strikes at floor and you know one jet strike. It's, it's unlikely though. So with that being said, this year with so many young guys, they're taking the opportunity to honestly develop people, get these guys their actual on-field experience. And if they do work out, let's say half of them work out, we're going to have a unit that's able to play with each other for four or five years prior to the issue of having to consider their second contracts. Four or five years. Guys, that's not what the Jets do. The Jets have not had a unit that has been together for any significant length of time in a long time. Since Mangold left on the offensive line, like we haven't had a unit that's been together for any length of time. Quarterbacks every couple of years, look at the wide receivers, our running backs change every single year or two. So, and it goes on and on and on. The cornerbacks, the the, the safeties, we had Jamal and, uh, and May for a couple of years, but even that it's gone. So if these guys work out, let's say Brandon Eccles, uh, Michael Carter II, and Bryce Hall work out at cornerback, they're good enough to play cornerback for us. And then you have behind them for nickel packages and dime, you have Pinnock and uh, Javelin Guidry and, uh, you know, and, and Isaiah Dunn. Let's say that they're together for a while. They're going to be within this system. They're going to know it inside and out and they'll be together gelling as a unit, being able to telepathically speak to each other for years. For years. I'll be 50 by the time they're done. 50, 53. If that happens, 53. Okay, it's fine. But I'm just saying, like, so if you're 25 now, this unit will be together till you're 30. How's that sound? So while it's nerve-wracking, it is. You got to, you look, it's nerve-wracking. I think it could be exciting if we just flip it and look at it through the correct lens. This is exciting time. Sala, Ulbricht, Odin, then LaFleur on the offense and all these guys. They believe that they can develop the guys that they wanted from the draft pool. Exciting times. So what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Are you scared? Are you excited? What's your take? I look forward to hearing from you. And that all said, I hope you're being safe up there in the Northeast if that's where you are. Uh, it's been tough and I'm rooting for you, man. My heart goes out to everybody up there. I have family up there myself. And with all that said, I hope you have a great weekend and go Jets.